And I think we are live. Let's see. Uh, that should do it, I think. All right. So uh, I'm very new to this whole recording or streaming thing. Um, I guess we're this is live, so we're actually streaming. So um, why am I streaming instead of recording? Um, honestly. I didn't even tell anyone I was going to stream this and I'm not really looking to get any uh, live views right now. This is just a, a more convenient way of recording, honestly. If someone tunes in, that's fine. Absolutely fine. Uh, I am hoping to get some viewers later on when I have more interesting stuff going on and we can discuss some of it. Uh, this is going to be the first part of a series I'm doing on coding the final boss on a Super Mario World Central collaboration production or what is it called uh, a Super Mario World Central Production 2 uh, I'm gonna be coding the final boss his name is Norvig uh, we do have some pretty sick concept art for him uh, but we have no finished art uh, that we can use in game so I'm gonna be uh, kind of roughing it on the code side usually I like to have uh, graphics ready when I start coding so I can incorporate like animations and other codes more easily uh, but this time we're not going to be able to do that, so we're going to be doing some pretty basic stuff mostly. Uh, we'll start with, I've done a little to-do list here. Uh, we'll be starting today with just the very basic stuff. We'll be setting up a face handler uh, and like basic stuff like uh, hit points on the boss and transitioning to the next uh, face and stuff. Uh, we'll set up hitbox, uh, a hitbox system. We're not going to be using the default one. Uh, we will be setting up interaction with the player, other sprites, and terrain. We will be doing the basics of the graphics, which means we'll do a uh, animation handler. We'll do a time map loader, and we'll leave some room for dynamic loads to be incorporated later. I don't really know which system this hack is using, so I don't know how to do this. Or, well, I, I know how to do it, but I don't know which system we're using, so I can't do it right now. But it's not like we're going to uh, finish with all of this uh, right now anyway. So um, it's fine if uh, we can't do uh, everything today. Uh, but this uh, I'm expecting this little project is going to take like uh, 25 to 35 work hours for me normally. I'm recording and I'm gonna be explaining some things I'm doing so some of it is gonna take a little longer so maybe 40 uh, I'll try to stream a little bit of this every day uh, I probably can't do it every day because school is starting soon but I um, I think we're gonna make uh, mad progress on this I uh, like I said I'm very new to this whole uh, recording thing uh, but I do talk to myself a lot normally when I'm coding. It helps me focus, so I don't think this is going to be all that different for me. Uh, I have done a few test runs uh, that I haven't actually public, uh, made publicly available anywhere. And uh, it seems like I get tired quicker when I talk, so I probably can't do like really long sessions here. I'm anticipating uh, that the live sessions are going to be like, I don't know, maybe between an hour and uh, 90 minutes, something like that. Uh, maybe we'll, they will sometimes be longer, maybe sometimes shorter. Um, I am not known for my consistency. <laughs> uh, let, let me tell you that right off the bat. So uh, let's start by looking at what we have so far. Uh, so we have, uh, we have this like very basic window here. Uh, this is gonna be our ASM file for the boss. Uh, I use Notepad++. I know some people like to use uh, Visual Studio. I do not like Visual Studio, but if you like it, use it. Uh, it doesn't matter, just pick whatever you're most comfortable and most efficient with. And for me, that is Notepad++. I have a custom like language thing for assembly code. Uh, so this is not the default. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? We have a very basic ROM here. This is just a clean Super Mario World ROM uh, with some slight modifications, of course. Uh, ROM obviously legally obtained and uh, what have I done? I uh, expanded it to 4 uh, megabytes with Lunar Magic, saved a level, then I ran Pixie once uh, with just this empty sprite uh, to make sure everything is working and nothing is crashing. 
I set up the overworld like this so we can very quickly uh, just get into our test level, which is this, uh, which is this un this empty sprite, which is going to be the boss. We have Mario here. We have a little bit of stretch of land that we're going to be using. Uh, I made some batch files to uh, debug and uh, just run the game. So this one is some. You should always be using something like this when you're coding uh, in assembly, or probably when you're coding in anything really. But this is something I see people not use a lot in um, the Super Mario World hacking community. So just do this, echo off so that you don't get a bunch of text in your command line, then just pixie and your ROM, and then you just open your ROM. So instead of having to actually run pixie and then open the ROM, I just click this make file, and because it's the only thing here that starts with M, I can just press M then enter, and we insert the sprite and then we open the ROM, and we're Good to go. I also made a debug version which will copy it to the uh, folder where I have business plus and then open it in business plus. I only do this when I have to debug because business plus is not nearly as convenient to use normally as uh, SNES 9x but having this shortcut is going to be very very helpful. Uh, so that's the basics out of the way. I considered making some placeholder graphics uh, for this session, but uh, and they would be extremely simple. They would just be like squares, maybe a circle, uh, so we can test the time map. But the time map loader. But I think we're just gonna uh, be testing the time map loader with the basic graphics that we find in SP1 anyway. And I don't think we're really gonna get to the point that we start writing animations. So uh, let's start with what I usually start with. I usually start with just drawing something on the screen. And uh, let's see, it's been a while since I wrote any code for something that wasn't Extra Mario World, so I'm gonna be a little slow on the uptake here, I think. But uh, let's start with uh, the graphics routine, anyway. So this is gonna be our main. Uh, we don't have anything in init currently, uh, we just have something in main. So um, let's start with uh, a bank wrapper, which we should always have. And let's say that the graphics routine start here. And we are not going to be using the default routines because I think they're pretty bad, especially for complex sprites. They're, they work just fine for simple things. But for the purposes of this, we want to, to have more control over the resources that we are uh, using. Let's see, I'm getting an error message on YouTube the streaming thing let's see here uh, error message error message resolution how do you change video resolution it's not supported the expected video resolution is 2560 times 1440 what the fuck is that resolution okay then wh why should I why why is that what I should do Wait, do I change that in OBS or do I change it on the browser? Uh, sorry, if ever, if anyone is watching this <laughs> in the future, uh, I apologize for my foolishness. Let's see here. Uh, is this really not going to be fine? How do you even... How do you even change the settings, I guess? Output stream. Output... Uh, video bitrate. Uh, let's see, streaming. Encoder, audio bitrate. There's not even a setting for changing it. What's the problem? Uh, I'm sure it will be fine. If this stream looks like shit later, uh, I, get, I guess that's just the way it is. Uh, we're gonna be writing pretty simple code here, so probably it's fine if you can just hear me and we'll fix it later. Uh, and yeah, this is gonna be the most scuffed stream you've seen in your life. Uh, it's gonna be pretty based. What, everything I say is going to be incredible and very useful. I'm gonna be showing you how to code like a boss. But uh, the stream quality is probably gonna be a bit scuffed because I am, I'm not gonna try hard on that front. All right, let's let's uh, let's just start with the graphics. Uh, let's see if we can uh, remember how to do this. Let's see, we're gonna be opening, I'm gonna have a hidden window open. 
uh, hidden. I'm gonna have a window open on my other monitor where I have the uh, Super Mario World uh, RAM map open. Uh, I recommend you always have this uh, close at hand when coding. It makes things a lot easier. And uh, we know that this hack does not use SA1, so we're gonna be using the uh, low addresses for RAM. So 0 through 1FFF instead of 6000 through uh, 7FFF. And there is nothing at uh, the 3000 address space. So let's see what we want to do. The first thing we want to do is um, we want to get the uh, coordinates on the screen because that's what OAM uses. And I know that Pixie has some defines that it comes with. It's not in sprites, where is it? It's in uh, ASM probably. And config, no, main. Where could it be? SA1 def probably. Here, define sprite table. Uh, we'll actually do it this way. We'll set it up like this. Here we have the defines. They don't need to be that big. We'll do that. But no, I don't really like that. Eh, this is fine. That will do. That will do. Uh, we want X position and Y position. Let's see here. Sprite Y low. That's what it's called. All right. All lowercase. That's nice. Sprite Y low. Index with X. Uh, y. Okay, this is actually pretty. I, okay, I can't stand this. Uh, we're gonna do this. Uh, sprite Y low. Actually, let's just call it Y low equal to sprite y low high repeat for high uh, repeat for x here uh, i really prefer it when i can refer to high and low with just two uh, letters like this i think this is way better Y low, I'm gonna need Y high, we're gonna need X low, and we're gonna need uh, X high. Let's see, let's start with X because that makes sense to me. And what we're gonna do here is uh, we're going to dump these in Scratch RAM. Uh, let's make a little plan for how we're gonna use Scratch RAM here. Uh, there. Uh, we'll put uh, X position in zero, which is something a lot of people are going to be used to. And this is going to be 16-bit. And we'll do the same thing with two, but for Y position. Uh, generally, using 16-bit mode is going to be a lot faster when processing time lapse. Uh, I don't really know what we'll use the rest of Scratch RAM for, but the next free oh, the next free one is uh, four which we will definitely be using. Can we, there we go. So let's see, we'll put this in zero, we'll put this in one, and uh, let's swap these and do this and go into 16-bit mode right away. And then we are going to subtract the uh, camera Y position uh, don't if I sound a little bit squeaky, it's because I have a cold. Uh, please don't please don't mind it. Uh, I I upgraded my mic, so I should be sounding a lot better. But because of uh, my uh, condition, I may not be sounding all that great. I guess. <laughs> so um, it is what it is. One step forward and uh, half a step sideways, or something like that. So let's see. Uh, and uh, of course. We'll start by just drawing one tile uh, to test this, and we want uh, Y position to be... Uh, it has to be uh, within 0 and EO, I think, on a normal screen, but it can also be uh, greater than FFFO, which is minus 16, so it, can, it has to be have at least one pixel on the screen to be allowed to be drawn. So we'll do here... If it's uh, less than EO, uh, good Y, then it can be drawn. Let's do this all lowercase like I usually do. Chords. Uh, so this is a sub-label. Uh, I guess we actually need a full label here as well, graphics. 
This is a sub-label, sub -label. this is a sub-sub-label. I find these very convenient. Um, I used to just use plus and minus labels a lot, but I find that the sub-sub-labels make for much more readable code. So I'm gonna be using those a lot. Uh, so if it's uh, less than EO, uh, this is uh, unsigned comparison. Uh, so because we're using the carry flag. So if it's less than this, it means that it's on the screen. And we also have to check to see if it's slightly above the screen and peeking in like uh, through the top half or through the top border. We do that by comparing to FFFO and it has to be greater to be good. Why? Otherwise, uh, return here. We'll just copy this code. But this is good. Why? And if this is the case, all right, I guess we have to actually make sure the registers are in the right size. Let's just do sub 30. Here, uh, we put this in two right away. This is gonna be the uh, on-screen Y position. Then we do the same thing for uh, X. We compare to 1A, we subtract 1A. And here the comparison is gonna be a bit different because the screen is wider than it's tall. And if it's less than 100 in hex, it's gonna be good Y, and a good X. Uh, same thing for the negative coordinate. ECS, a good X, good X. Uh, actually, to optimize a bit, we can do BCC bad chord. And we'll put that here. Bad coordinate, very bad, bad coordinate. Uh, here, uh, but if it's a good x coordinate, we just store it to zero. So now we have the on screen coordinates in zero and uh, two. Uh, let's go back to 8 bit mode and uh, let's draw something here just to see if it works. Uh, sprite OEM index, probably. Let's see, sprite OEM index, yeah. And then we'll do here. Um, I don't actually use like using addresses for these, so I'll just add up here OAM equal to. Um, do we do it? I I'm thinking if we should use the uh, if we're gonna need the two hundred block, or if we can do use just the three hundred block. Um, I think the three hundred block is gonna be enough. I think it's gonna be just fine. Uh, so I'll just set this to, um, you know what, we'll do this. Uh, OAM, hi, uh, one second. Is that right? I think that's right. No, what am I doing? It's 20, 60 as if you're accessing uh, the 300 block. Here, uh, we'll do OAM plus 100. There, I'm happy with that. Then we'll do for Y. Let's see. Then we'll get the tile number. And what should we use? Uh, let's see. Here, we'll use the... Um, let's try star. I like stars. 48, huh? 48, huh? Can we... Uh, no? Damn it! Wait, does this not work anymore? Oh, Windows, you're so complicated. Is that good? I think so. No. Are they not merged anymore? Oh, how annoying. I don't usually resize my windows. I just keep them at 50. 50. But I think this... Uh, I'm too stubborn for my own good. Okay, let's do this. Uh, 48, put that in OAM plus uh, 102. And then we'll get the uh, property byte. Let's just set it to um, just set it to 30 max priority. OAM plus 103. We're probably going to be using which palette are we most likely to use? Uh, probably E and F. So let's actually set this to E right now. And then we write to the high byte. We're going to get the uh, this bit from uh, X position uh, high byte. Uh, so to set that properly. 
and then we add uh, 2 to make the tile uh, 16 by 16 and we write to OEM high plus 40 uh, Y oh also we have to uh, do that get the uh, divide the index by 4 and this is all you need to do to dry tile uh, looks pretty simple right this is way simpler than calling all the routines that people usually do uh, at least I think this is easier. Uh, if you got any complaints, then file them in the comments. Uh, but who knows, maybe I'm a fool and this actually doesn't work because I forgot something obvious or something. I don't know. Uh, let's see here. If we can make this, uh, if we can make this happen. I think I'm gonna put this here. And uh, I wonder, can we? Uh, th this, this is fine. Let's see if this works. <laughs> the, I think the most likely outcome here, uh, me just blindly testing something, is that it crashes. But let's see if that's true. No, it, it works just fine. So here it is. This is our star that we drew. And we can see that... Uh, does it have... It does, it does have priority over the ground. It does not have priority over Mario, because sprite sprite priority is only determined by OAM order, rather than the PP bits. <laughs> PP bits. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so so that's it. This is gonna be the like basics of our OAM routine. This is the stuff we use to put a tile on the screen. But obviously, we don't just want to put a tile on the screen. We want to put lots of tiles on the screen, especially for a boss sprite that we're making. So we are going to. Um, turn this into uh, a generic tile map loader, I guess we can call it. Uh, let's remove this return label. Uh, I like to not have any spaces in between here, but I think this is going to be better for teaching purposes. So let's do this. Uh, no, let's, uh, for coordinates, let's just do this and good y, good x. Um, here, I guess. And this is gonna be the next part. And this is a draw tile. This is, if everything works out right, uh, we do this here. And this here, bad chord is, uh, so what we're gonna do is uh, we want a function that will, or we want to write this routine in a way where we can just pass a pointer to a tile map in ROM or RAM if that turns out to be more convenient. Probably not because we're working without SA1s. We don't have that many cycles to work with. So uh, efficiency when loading tile maps is actually gonna be um, something we have to worry a little bit about. Uh, but we want to pass a tile map, something like this, uh, where we write uh, maybe, um, let's say we pass a header, which is just the size of the tile map maybe like here, four, uh, four bytes. And then we, uh, if we want to pass this time, it would be zero, zero, which is the X and Y offsets. And then the tile is 48, and then the property is 3E, right? So if we want to draw this, we would pass a pointer to this, and we would, would read this from the pointer. So I guess we now know what we're putting for. This is gonna be the tile map pointer. And the reason we wanna do it this way is because this is going to make our programming a lot more convenient going forward, especially when we start working with animation codes. And uh, I have done some testing previously, Extra Mario World used to be for the SNES without the SA1. So I do know that this is gonna be no problem on the SNES as long as we don't have too many sprites on screen at once. And because this is a boss, uh, there aren't gonna be that many sprites on screen. So this is gonna be just fine. So uh, let's proceed with this. Uh, we're gonna uh, try loading this. There's gonna be the, uh, let's call this test TM. Uh, and this is gonna be our first test run. So let's just do this. Uh, test TM, get the pointer to it, store in four, and then return uh, A to uh, 8 bit. Now, what we're gonna try to do is uh, load this. So we want these. Uh, I am thinking that maybe the best thing to do is not to have these in... Hmm. I'm thinking... Uh, no, this, this is going to be just fine. This is going to work. So what we do is we get the... Um, 
also we want to make sure, okay, so let me explain properly what I'm trying to do here. So we want to load a tile map from a pointer. Uh, this is gonna be the header. This is how many bytes we're loading. Uh, you could do, make this a 16-bit number, but that's sort of pointless because there's no way we're loading more than 256 bytes for one tile map. If we ever do that, we're sort of in trouble anyway. And this is gonna be the x-coordinate. Uh, relative to the sprite position. This is going to be the y coordinate relative to the sprite position. This is going to be the uh, tile number. This is going to be the property byte. We might want to like yeah, mess with these a little bit um, at some point. Uh, probably not the tile number, but we might want to mess with the property byte. For example, we want to automatically flip the 40 bit if the sprite is facing the other direction. Uh, let me just double check which direction is which here. Uh, I think it's uh, 157C, is that right? Damn, my memory is out of this world, dude. I can't believe I still remember that. So let's see. Uh, zero is facing right. Uh, one is facing left. And I know that in uh, graphics for Super Mario World, sprites typically face left. So what we're going to do is, if this is 1, we don't flip. If it's 0, we do flip. So let's see here. Uh, load sprite direction, maybe? Direction. Gaston direction. Let's see. Sprite uh, direction. Is that not a thing? 157C here. Misc? Are you serious? Okay, let's add this here then. Um, dir. Uh, here, I guess it's this. Sprite misc. No, like this. Yeah, is this... Wait, am I, am I crazy? No, this is right, isn't it? I think so. Anyway, so uh, we'll get this. Dir and... Uh, what we'll do is get this as a 40 bit, uh, but we also have to flip this. Ah, is this even good? I don't, I don't even know. We're just gonna make sure this works uh, for now. We put this in six. Uh, this is going to be uh, 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 x flip flag here. Put this here. Uh, we're gonna assume most of these are 16-bit, even though this is obviously 8-bit. Uh, put this here, uh, and now we get the chords. And uh, when using these, we have to... Um... So let's see, now I'm sort of thinking here uh, that we're gonna be needing... We're gonna have to use the Y uh, index to access the tile map, and that leaves us with only the X index to... Or the X uh, register to index the... Uh, OAM mirror here. But we don't really need to access sprite registers here, uh, so we're probably going to be doing it this way. Uh, let's grab this here. Uh, sprite coordinate, sprite coordinate, sprite coordinate. Here we'll get Y, and we also have to make sure that we're not losing the sprite index ever. Uh, we'll worry about that later. I'm sure we'll be fine. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, store two three, move that down. Store two two. Here we'll get these. Uh, that's the uh, that's the only stuff we need from the um, sprite index. Here, so here on out, we do not have access to sprite registers because we are shredding X here. So let's make sure that we're not actually losing it even though we're shredding it so this is gonna be a loop this is going to be a uh, this is gonna be the actual return address i guess so let's make sure we do this properly uh, we do not need a 16-bit index. We can make do with 8-bit. Uh, uh, let's read the first byte of the pointer, which is going to be the header, which is how many bytes are in this tile map. We write this to the next byte, which is 8. 
like I said earlier, we're assuming these are 16-bit because that's going to make things easier um, on us mostly. Uh, number of bytes to read from time up. And then I guess, um, I guess we'll actually do this. We'll put this here and move this up. And then we'll increment this by one. So it points to the actual tile data here. So when we get this uh, for here, it points to this, the start of this label. So the first byte we read is this. Uh, we read it, put it in eight. Uh, so what this opcode does is it reads this address that is stored in four and this address is stored. So it reads this byte. We copy this to eight in scratch RAM. Then we increment this address. So now it doesn't point here, it points to this byte. So the next byte we read is going to be this zero here. And this is what we want because that means we can compare this index directly to this byte instead of having to do any math based on it if we decide to add something else to the header later. Like the header might not stay at one byte. Uh, so I think this is gonna be the simpler way of doing it. And here, uh, so let's just write here uh, x equal to OEM index, y equal to uh, tile map table index. So here we have uh, this. So what we do is we go into 16 bit mode, of course. We load the. This is going to be the loop. The, the loop. Uh, is going to start uh, here, I think. Loop starts here. We get this byte, uh, this is the x-coordinate. Uh, this is an 8-bit number, so we make sure we only load uh, the first byte. And we do need to load this in 16-bit mode, so we are actually clearing B here. Uh, B is the high byte of the accumulator. So we clear the high byte of the accumulator, we only have this 8-bit number, but we need to account for this being signed. That is, if it's greater, to, greater than 80 hex or 128, it means that it's negative, but this is not gonna be reflected in the 16-bit uh, version. So what we do is we compare it to uh, 80, and if it's less than 80, we skip the next opcode, uh, but if it's not, we uh, set this like so. Am I doing this right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, and we get this. Um, yeah, I guess we have to store this somewhere else now because we definitely have to save this uh, opcode. Uh, we have to save this value here because this is, let's see. Uh, so we change these to sprite positions and then we make this, uh, I don't know what we'll put in A. I kind of like aligning stuff to here now, C and E. I think C and E are easier to remember than like A and C. Uh, let's do that. Uh, let's just leave it like that. Uh, tile X position. Tile Y position. See so X flip flag. Uh, so we get this value here. Uh, and remember what we did with uh, the uh, uh, let's see X flip flag. What we want to do is we actually want to check this and if it's set or like if this here is set So the sprite is facing the other way, which is uh, if it's facing right uh, Let's see. Yeah, this is gonna be 40 if it's facing right and zero if it's facing left uh, Then we actually want to invert this so that we don't have to account for this anywhere else if the sprite turns around the tile map will just handle that automatically this does get a little tricky if uh, we start combining uh, 8 by 8 tiles and 16 by 16 tiles later. I don't know if we'll do that, probably not, because this is a boss, so we have access to the entirety of SP2 and SP3 and SP4 for the purposes of this. Um, but just a heads up, if you do want to combine 8 by 8 tiles and 16 by 16 tiles, this is not quite going to work out uh, simply. But right now, let's assume they're all 16 by 16 tiles. Uh, so we let use the bit command and uh, we do that on 6, but we're in 16-bit mode, so we add minus 1 and bvc, uh, let's just flip this here and add 1 because we're tryhards, like so. So now we definitely have the x-coordinate here. Uh, 
We are not going to be using this stuff for Y coordinate because we don't use vertical flip pretty much ever for anything, uh, but we're definitely using X flip. So let's put this in um, uh, C, tile X position. Uh, and then we are already in 16 bit mode. Uh, so, no, actually, let's not store that yet. We have to compare it to camera. This is in Y, huh? All right. So, let's rewrite this sec SPC 1A. BCC, good X, good X, and uh, BCS, good X, bad chord. Uh, I guess we'll just remove this. What am I doing? <laughs> this is a bit of a mess, uh, but it's fine. I, I know what I'm doing. I'm a big boy. Let's see, we'll change this to E. And this is now a good Y and bad chord. So let's see. After we read this byte, we want to make sure we're also incrementing the index. Although we don't. Uh, we don't have to do that yet, but we probably want to. Let's see. If we increment it immediately, then we don't have to make it different for when we branch to bad chord here. And then on bad chord, uh, we're gonna be doing this, and then a loop check here. So it still increments by four for every loop because every tile has four bytes here. So here, we're reading the first byte, we're incrementing the index by one. If uh, this goes well, uh, actually, if this goes wrong, we go to bad chord, we increment by three more, so we increment it by four. Uh, so we're going to pass this, and that means that the loop is not going to continue later. We'll make sure it doesn't. Uh, if this does go well, and it's on screen, we go on here to good X, uh, we uh, oh, right. Uh, I guess what we do is call this bad x. We'll add one increment y here and two here, and we'll call this bad y. We can just branch there. I guess that's better. Bad y. Because we're gonna have to read the next byte of the uh, tile map in order. No, we we're already ready to do that. What am I doing? What am I doing? Uh, here, so we read this, uh, good x, we store this in here, we store it in c. And now, we get the next byte. This is the y coordinate, uh, or y offset, rather. We do the exact same thing here, uh, by checking if it's negative. And then we add this to... <laughs> I forgot to do this up here. Uh, after we do that! and flip it and everything. We still have to add it to uh, the uh, sprite x coordinate. So we do that there. And this is sprite x coordinate. Uh, then we subtract the camera y coordinate to get the on-screen position. Let's see, we're still on only on plus one on the index, which is very important to keep track of. Uh, if it's bad, now, if, it, if it's on screen, we go here, good Y, increment by one, so we're ready to read the time number. Otherwise, we get bad chord, increment by three, then loop. Perfect. And we don't start to zero, we start to E here. So here, we draw the tile. This is what this is going to be called. This is still going to be mostly the same. Uh, let's see, we have another in Y here. So we have, we are plus two on index. We load the next byte. Uh, we just straight up store this to uh, tile num. Uh, we can probably do mostly the same for property, except we're gonna be flipping the uh, x flip based on the sprites facing. Then we store this to OAM plus 103x, and uh, then it's smooth sailing from here, I think. C and E. And these are indexed by x now. Let's see, uh, plus three. After we read this, uh, let's make let's make sure we uh, there now we're plus four here as well. And uh, we remove these. Uh, 
uh, change this to x ta txa and tax, and then we get this gonna be uh, d, no? Yeah, e d, c d <laughs> e f. Yeah. Uh, make sure it's uh, that uh, here. And because it's a loop, we actually have to preserve this counter as well. See what is fastest doing this push x pull x and then increment x by four, or do we actually increment x by one here, then transfer it back, multiply by four and transfer it back again. Let's see, and then we don't have to push and pull, which is pretty expensive and uh, it costs eight cycles to do inks four. Uh, I think it might actually be faster to, I'm not gonna bother checking this right now. If someone wants to do it, feel free to correct me. But I think it might actually be faster to do this, TXA ASL4, not two, uh, tax. Uh, because we are gonna have to do one inks here and see two four cycles six eight cycles ten cycles so we're plus two on cycles but we get to skip the uh, push x pull x which is a pretty expensive operation all things considered so i think that's gonna be it for there but now um, i guess here we just uh jump to loop a loop check Let's see here. Uh, this label is gonna be moved here. We're gonna call this loop. Loop starts here. Yeah, it's pretty obvious now that it's called loop. And uh, we call this loop check. And we compare y to eight, which was the uh, counter, I think, yep. And if it's uh, greater, we return. And we are going to put a push X up there. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten it. And then we just jump to loop, I guess. Is this faster? Should we um, try to cram this somewhere else maybe? Let's see, so we want as few jumps as possible, obviously, because jump uh, takes three cycles, I think. And uh, this makes sure that this jump is executed if the tile was not drawn and not drawing a tile is cheaper than drawing the tile. So putting the jump here is better than putting the jump uh, some... But we're also jumping here, I guess. But what would be the alternative? This is gonna be pretty big probably. And we are gonna add some other stuff here later, probably. Uh, I think this is fine for now. We want, we might optimize this later uh, if we can come up with a better solution. Uh, let's just make sure that we're actually pushing X here. And let's see if this works. Uh, like I said before, the most likely outcome is that this crashes. <laughs> That's what you should always expect when you're testing something. Can this not... Can Mario not save here? Okay, it's still drawing, perfect. And as you see, it's, no, oh, so it crashes when it's off screen. Okay, that's very good to know. Uh, so what happened there is that if you look at the code, we're going through here. It kind of bothers me that the taskbar is not showing. You know, I wanted to hide it because I was like, oh, what if I accidentally dox myself somehow? But uh, I'm kind of getting pissed off by not being there. So I think I'm going to enable it anyway. Uh, let's see, where do you automatically hide the taskbar? No. Let's not, let's just have it on, whatever, dude. You can see what, what the current date is, oh no. Uh, yeah, so if you're, if you're wondering, I am in fact doing this live. <laughs> so let's see, uh, so what happened, uh, we're in the loop, uh, we're loading this, da da da, increment one. Uh, we are going through here, this is going fine. We're adding this, we're subtracting this, compare. Uh, and what happens is that this does not trigger and this does trigger, does it? I don't know, so we go to loop check and uh, I think the reason this fails is that uh, A is in 16-bit uh, mode here, but it's expected 8-bit mode here. 
because we're going to loop check and this doesn't trigger because we're only loading four bytes and uh, so we go to return. I guess that means this does trigger but the loop doesn't continue. And then we just pull X and B and we return but A is still in 16-bit mode so the code after our sprite code uh, crashes the game. Let's test it now. Oh my gosh, this is so annoying. How do we... How, how do you remove this? How, how do you remove this? This is so upsetting. I cannot accept this. How, how do you remove the intro level? It's... Uh, this is very important. I can't stand this. Intro level determines the low byte of the intro level number. Change the zero to skip the intro level and it's address 9CB1. Uh, let's see, do we have author here? Can we do patches with Pixie? Probably not. Uh, I guess we'll open with, uh, do we have checks here? All right now, let's just use this. Is this a header? Let's see, how big is this? Yeah, this does have a header. So we go on, uh, let's see, it's going to be 1CB1 plus 200 here. Let's see, could this be right? E9? I think that is right. Yeah, so we set this to zero. Save. Make. Yeah, we did it. We did it, Reddit. We did, we did it stream. All right, awesome. So now we have our timelapse loader. Let's do this in slow motion to make sure it works frame by frame. You see it's only being drawn when it's on screen. I'm sure it works for Y as well, but I guess I don't actually know that. So we are going to test. Uh, we are going to set uh, vertical scrolling at will, and then we'll just place some blocks or whatever so we can jump up to see if it does indeed work. Interesting platforming. Put that there. That should be enough to get it off screen uh, vertically and vertically on both sides, right? Well, let's just place two of them. Why not? Let's place a bunch of them. <laughs> See if it works. Uh, actually, let's place one more here. Like that. Uh, make. Uh, these work just fine, it seems. Oh? No, I placed this one here, right? I placed an extra one. Seems like it works. Wait, is no one off screen like below or above? I want to test that as well. Okay, that works. That works just fine. So I guess this one has to go up a bit. And it seems like that one works as well. Let's remove layer three so we can see more clearly here. Let's see, uh, that looks fine to me. And it seems like it's synced with the camera too. Like it's not moving one frame late or one frame early. Of course it can move one frame early, but it's not moving one frame late. You see that in some games, uh, most famously Pokemon, I guess, the old Pokemon games. All right, so let's remove those. We know that that works now. And we can set this back to no vertical scroll because that's the setting we're gonna be using for the actual boss fight. And let's get this back up. Oh no, what, what happened? Why is it like this? All right, uh, sure. Oh no, this is so annoying. I hate, I hate Windows, but I also like it, I guess. <laughs> I have an ambivalent love-hate relationship with Windows, okay? Okay, so our uh, tile map pointer loader thing uh, works just fine. We have a bunch of free bytes in Scratch RAM if we ever want to use them later. Uh, let's see, Scratch RAM use for tile map loader. Uh, I think now we have a representation of where the sprite is on screen. Let's move this to the top. Uh, here so we have this uh, now we want to make it actually do stuff and I think at this point it makes sense 
to... Um, Mm, we can either do the hitbox loader now and some basic interaction or we can start talking about where we're going with the design. But I think we're actually going to do the hitbox thing first and then we'll talk about the design. Uh, with the hitbox loader we want to do something pretty similar to the tile map loader. Uh, we just want to pass a pointer and we want that to... and then we want the hitbox to just load that. Uh, I haven't. I don't really know how we're gonna be passing uh, hitbox pointers. I guess we'll figure that out. That's probably gonna be part of the face code. Uh, not face, as in F A C E, but P H A S E. You know, like this word here, face. Like because the boss can have uh, several faces. Uh, so hitbox. Uh, what we're gonna do here is something very similar. We're gonna uh, load the uh, hitbox into. Uh, what is it? Mario goes into the zero slot, right? So Mario goes. Uh, Mario's hitbox is going to be loaded like this: X low. Uh, this is Y low. This is width. This is uh, height, and um, then the uh, other coordinates are X high and uh, Y high. Let's see. Uh, secondary hitbox. So this is going to be everything we compare the sprite to. Uh, this is Mario, this is uh, uh, other sprites, this is maybe, I don't think we'll use this for terrain at all, but uh, yeah, Mario and other sprites are going to go in this slot. And then uh, sprite hitbox is going to go into 4, x low, uh, let's just copy this and uh, uh. Four, five, six, seven, A, B. And then what is the routine we call? I never remember this. Let's see. It's uh, check for contact here. And then we call this routine to check for contact between these two. So what this is uh, how a lot of old Nintendo games do uh, uh, contact checks. You load hitboxes like this. Uh, and they actually use these exact addresses in multiple games. They probably just copy paste the code. It's pretty generic, so you can put in pretty much anything. And then you call this routine. Uh, obviously, this this address is Super Marvel specific. Uh, you call this, and it checks these two, and returns returns with carry set if they touch or if they overlap, and carry clear if they do not. So uh, a lot of the time, you see people uh, calling. Uh, what are they? They're this routine. Uh, player clipping into zero, you have uh, this routine, sprite clipping x into uh, four, and then you have this final routine here. Oh. Right, clipping x into zero, and then you call this one uh, check for contact. So these are the ones we have to work with. Usually, uh, people will be using these two and this to just load clippings. We are going to be using this one, player clipping, because it's simple and easy. We probably only have to do it like once every frame. And uh, people often use these. And these are great if you, you're coding a simple sprite. Uh, for our boss sprite, these are not gonna do. Uh, we have to make our own hitbox loader, but we will be using this routine to check for contact because that's, again, very simple. If we end up being really scuffed for, wait, that's not right, that's not the right word. If we end up being really starved for cycles and we really need to, I don't know. We can we can get a slight performance boost by uh, putting the code here instead of calling this routine. I don't think it's gonna make a huge difference. We might do it in the future. Uh, it is faster, um, but for now we're gonna be using these. So here, let's see. I guess we'll put this down below just to match the way we did the graphics comments. I guess. Normally I like to put a lot of comments on what I write, but uh, I think that's really boring on stream. Like, why do you want to see me just going about putting fucking comments and everything? That's kind of boring, right? So we're not going to be doing that today. 
we're not gonna be doing that day. I might add comments later off stream, but probably not. Uh, what we're writing so far is pretty straightforward anyway. So what we do here, we do the same thing. We want a pointer. Um, let's see. Where do we put this stuff? I guess we can do this. We can put a uh, data label here and we'll just do a hit box. Test hit box, not text, test. Stupid fingers. And this doesn't need a header. It's always gonna be six bytes, uh, X, Y offset and uh, width and height. Let's just do zero for offset, um, like so. And let's make it, no, actually, let's uh, make this a bit more fair. Let's make it smaller. And then we'll add it to, I guess, to offset. So this is gonna add two to X coordinate and Y coordinate, and it's going to be 12 pixels wide and 12 pixels tall. So it like, it's like a 16 by 16 tile, but you shrink it a little bit on either on all sides, shrink it by two pixels on all sides. And we're probably gonna want the same thing for uh, uh, flipping this uh, hitbox uh, based on direction. I don't rem I, I know I have a function like that for extra marble. I don't remember how I did it. I might cheat and look that up, but probably not. We're probably just gonna do it here. And let's see, uh, we load, uh, let's see, hitbox, uh, data, test hitbox. Let's put this in uh, zero, why not? No, wait, we actually use that. Uh, let's put it in E. Like so, and um, then we, just like for graphics, we actually want uh, sprite coordinates like this. X low, here, and uh, let's go X high, Y low, and uh, Y high there. And uh, now you see the order here is two bytes for X offset, two bytes for Y offset, and then two bytes for the width and height. Uh, although they're one byte each. Uh, these are 16 bit numbers, so we don't have to do any like shenanigans uh, for checking for signed bytes or anything. So we're just gonna read these outright. Um, read the first two bytes without index because that's slightly faster. Just think of it as an optimization. Uh, here, add X offset store to, um, all right, I guess these want to go into, uh, these want to go into here. So we, so keeping these here, is that fine? I actually don't know if it's fine. Hmm. I think we might want to put these in here, C and D. Then we put these, hmm. This is kind of annoying actually. How do, what's the fastest way to do this? Let's start. We want to minimize the amount of times we swap between 8-bit mode and 16-bit mode. And we want to minimize the amount of like uh, shuffling we have to do with like bytes going from one place to another. Uh, we'll add this to uh, C, I guess. Put this in four. Uh, and we don't want to use any of uh, these bytes that, that are used by the secondary hitbox because we might want to like load the player's hitbox then compare to a bunch of sprite hitboxes. So we don't want to overwrite any of this. Uh, and the four free bytes we have in Scratch RAM are um, C, D, E, and F because they're not used by any of these. Uh, two of them are used by the pointer. And... Um, Let's see, do we even need a pointer for this? Maybe, what if we just pass like a 16-bit index to it? Does that make sense? It does, right? We can do that. Like we store... Why should we have a pointer? It's always the same size. What if we just do, um, we do, we go, 
uh, full 16-bit mode here, and we don't even do the pointer. We just do uh, ldy data test hitbox, and then we just uh, <laughs> do this. This is gonna load from DB, uh, as in the data bank we've loaded, which is this bank. So it's gonna load this address. Why would we just do that? Isn't that just better? I think so. I think this is just better. So now we can put these in uh, C, D, E, F, like so. We just gotta make sure we remember uh, this. Uh, full, actually. Uh, it doesn't matter if we make x 16-bit uh, because uh, the high bytes of index regs are always zero when they're in 8-bit mode. So this is not going to make us load anything weird uh, if we do access uh, sprite regs. Although we might not even do that. Uh, so let's see. To do that, uh, add to C, uh, store in 4. That's a low byte in 4. We're over in 5, but it doesn't matter. We're going to write to it again soon anyway. And then we XBA store to uh, A, I guess. We can't actually write to 9, otherwise that would be a nice optimization. It would be faster to do uh, Y first, I guess. And because we're doing this as an index, we can actually just do this. That's pretty nice. Add to E, which is the Y coordinate, right? No, way I flip these? What am I doing? I don't like this. C, D, E, F, oh, here, uh, yeah, add to E, store to 5, uh, store to A, so this means uh, low byte 5, high byte B, just so we remember, right? Because we don't, we don't actually want to write to A, but it doesn't matter because we're going to overwrite anyway. And here the high byte goes into 6, but that doesn't matter because we're going to overwrite that 2 anyway. So what we go do now is we load uh, this, which is the size, and we just straight up store this to 6. So now we overwrite that anyway. Uh, with plus height into 6 plus 7. Then we take this. Uh, add C, and I think here we go back to uh, 16, but no, to 8-bit mode, like so. And we store this to 4, and then we f uh, get the high byte and store that to A. So let's see here. Low byte X, 4, high byte X goes into A. Let's add uh, this here just to specify. So this is sort of like needlessly specific, uh, these comments. I usually don't comment th like this, I guess. Actually, I kind of do sometimes. <laughs> anyway, this is very clear what this means now. So now we have the first hitbox loaded, definitely. We're not flipping it based on direction. We'll add that later. Um, I'm still a little bit sick, honestly, uh, and I feel myself getting really tired from this. I think I need a break soon. So we're gonna just make sure this works. Uh, add some basic interaction, and uh, then we'll probably call it a day, and I'll continue this stream tomorrow. Uh, maybe I'll like tell people on Discord I'm doing this, and we'll get some live viewers. I don't really know. Um, I'm honestly kind of happy I have no live viewers right now because I was hella nervous going into this. But honestly, this is pretty fun. Uh, let's hope the stream quality actually turns out good, or at least passable. Anyway. Uh, let's get Mario's uh, clipping. Let's actually make this a define up here. Uh, get Mario clipping. Let's make sure these all align as well. Another thing I want to say, um, you can use tabs or spaces to indent your code and stuff. I like to use two tabs because that's enough that I can put a sub label here if I want to, like sub. Uh, I can also put like plus and minus labels here, which is pretty nice. Uh, I think that looks pretty ugly when you put them all the way out here, sub or plus, like I don't like this. So I use two tabs. My tab is set to eight spaces, I believe. Um, honestly, tab is just way better than space. If you're doing space, like what is wrong with you? Just use tab. Um, 
but whatever you do, don't fucking mix them, okay? Don't do like some things with space and some things with tab. That's uh, that that really grinds my gears. If you ever ask me to review your code and you have mixed spaces and tabs, I'm probably not going to respond. Uh, just just a heads up. Um, yeah. Um, Make make it keep it clean folks keep it clean. So here get Mario clipping is uh, this right and then this is gonna be check for contact uh, check contact Here uh, Let's say here I guess we can get these as well. Why not? Get right clipping 04 I think this was Oh, yeah, the first one was 04, the one that ends with 9.5. Oh, like so, Mario clipping, uh, sprite clipping 4, sprite clipping 0, check contact. Wonderful, so now we can actually just do this, uh, get Mario clipping. JSL uh, check contact BCC no contact no contact and then here interaction code here uh, like so can we there and uh, what do we do here let's just make uh, Mario bounds or something uh, I think there are some support routines for like spawning um, extended sprites in Pixie let's see here uh routines and uh, extended where could it be fireball contact no spawn smoke i think is a contact sprite Let's see smoke no uh contact graphic too so this is the input for this one uh x y timer what should timer be? I don't actually know. I think it's eight frames, right? That's what I recall. Eight. Oh, A is equal to, you don't even write it. All right. Let's see. We're gonna have no X, Y uh, coordinates for now. And let's make the timer eight. And then number two, and then, um, Spawn smoke like that. Spawn smoke. Like so. Also we'll add this and the F9, I think, is that right? The, the F9. Yeah, that's a, f I think this is right. Uh, two, yeah, two is the contact sound. And uh, then we'll uh, give Mario some vertical speed, I guess. Let's do, um, where's Mario's Y speed? It's this, I think. And uh, make, let's see if this works. No errors, that's a good thing. Let's see if we can jump on this boy. We can. Woo, very nice. Obviously this interaction code is running, let's see here. Is running every frame that Mario touches the sprite. So it's run is running here, 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 here. We can see that this is gonna last more than eight frames after Mario stops touching it. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I guess not. <laughs> Maybe it's not running. No, it, it it definitely is. It definitely is. I just don't really know how this graphics routine works. I guess on the uh, contact sprite. Okay, so we got the hitbox set up. Uh, something that's weird here is that Mario's height is not as influenced by holding B, holding or not holding B as it should be. Uh, so let's make sure we add a uh, check for that here. Um, bit 15, BPL, skip, and then load, I guess, um, something, a bigger number, AO maybe? That's, a, that's really big. It's really big. Maybe put this on uh, C8 and AO. I guess that's fine. And uh, let's also make sure we're gonna add our first like sprite rig here. And let's pick a free one. I think 1504 is free. I think we can use that one uh, as we please. 
uh, revolving brown platform. It's only used for that. Okay, so let's copy this here and um, see routines. RAM sprite regs to do um, and then here it goes to sprite code something like that something like that I think I say that a lot maybe I should stop I should stop saying it or something like that <laughs> see what I did so let's here add um, no wait there isn't there, I was gonna add a non-interaction timer, but isn't there one already? Uh, but we're gonna have multiple hitboxes on the boss probably, so. Hmm. Let's make a separate no bounds timer. I think that's right. I think that's fine. No bounds timer. And that's gonna be this. And also now we're gonna have to do something here. Uh, on main, let's add timers. And we're gonna, uh, can you put macros in pixie sprites? I don't actually know, let's try it. Macro deck uh, timer and macro reg. And we uh, load reg uh, b EQ uh, and and deck reg like so. I kind of want to call this deck reg. What if it's not a timer? Deck reg. Deck reg. <laughs> deck reg. And we uh, put in what do I call it? no bounds timer and here we're gonna put all our timers that we use that we want to decrement every frame uh, under this label and uh, so wh 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 what we're doing here is we're using this macro so how macros work you probably know how macros work uh, whenever we call this macro like this this code here gets inserted whatever we put here is gonna be put here so we do this deck reg no bounds timer that's gonna uh, turn out to be load no bounds timer index with x if it's zero already we jump to this label here the question mark means it's a macro label so we can have multiple of these no problem and if it's not zero we decrement it by one and then we go to this label anyway so every frame we decrement this by one until it hits zero then we stop decrementing it and this is extremely useful in a lot of codes just having a bunch of these there are a bunch of sprite registers that work like this already but i don't really want to use them unless we're using them for their intended purpose or something similar uh, for example there is a no interaction um one already that we might use later but this one is going to work only for bouncing this is only going to disable bouncing on the boss uh, because we might want to let Mario like bounce on the boss and if he's inside a dangerous hitbox like on the next frame We want him to still get hit if we just use one timer. That's not going to be possible So here interaction code uh, Let's not put the yeah, let's actually put this here because this is the uh, not interaction code. It's gonna be the bounce code and here we load. Um, hmm, I guess this doesn't make sense either. We should put it before. So we want to add this check first because just check is way cheaper than. Hmm. So this is gonna be. Let's put it here for now. We might move it later. No bounds. Timer X B and E no contact. And then upon contact, we want to set this to um, something, a low number, like eight, no bounce timer. This makes the after Mario bounce on the sprite, he can no longer bounce on it for eight frames. After those frames are up, he can bounce on it again. This makes it so that when we bounce through it, uh, it doesn't like generate like doo -doo 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 -doo, that sort of sound effect, you know? And even like if you fall at the sprite with enough speed, you're gonna be within it for two frames or more. So you you, you might get a like effect, which we don't want. 
Now instead he will only bounce the first frame and then for eight frames he will be disabled from bouncing on it again. And that like that eight frames is so short that it's not gonna make like so you ever miss a bounce you should get. It just makes it so that one bounce becomes one bounce, you know? That good stuff. Let's see if we did this right. Did we get no errors? All right, let's see if this works. Yeah, you can already see it that it's different. Mario's like not really floating on it, it's just like tuk tuk, tuk tuk. The placement of this uh, uh, contact graphic is gonna have to change for sure. We probably wanna put it on like the average of like these two hitboxes maybe. Um, we also want to make sure Let's see, we're working on the hitbox loader right now, not really interaction. We just did that to make sure the hitbox loader works. What we want to do now is make sure the hitbox properly flips around when the sprite flips around. So default is going to be uh, facing left, right? Because that's the default for the graphics, that's the default for the graphics routine. You see all these boys are facing left, so we're gonna assume that's the default. So this you see here, this is true when it faces left. When it faces right, we want this to flip. So this is gonna be sort of unintuitive and I don't really know how to explain it. And I'm also sort of tired. It's very possible that I should take a break here and do this next time, but we're gonna push through it anyway. So what we wanna do is we wanna figure out how to flip these X coordinates when the sprite is turned around. And I think the way this works is that think of the sprite as being a 16 by 16 square. This is the default like core position of the sprite. And we know this because if you look here, when we place this here, uh, what is this coordinate here? This coordinate is 219. So 32 pixels here and uh, 19 in, this is in hex, right? No, it's not. It's in decimal. Oh, damn it, Lunar Magic. Uh, what is 19? So 13 pixel, uh, 130 pixels in hex. What does that point to? It points to the top left corner of the square, of the 16 by 16 square. And we're going to sort of have to work with the size when we're doing hitboxes. Otherwise, we'll end up with like weird things where offset zero like refers to the middle of this tile, but that's not really intuitive when we're comparing it to the way the graphics works. So we're gonna assume that the tile has, that the sprite has like a 16 by 16 core in the middle of it. And the hitbox is based on this thing, right? But we can still have like offsets and sizes to make sure that the hitbox is like this or like this or like this, if we want like anything like that. But the point is if we have, for example, a, uh, let's say the boss like punches forward or something and the hitbox is like this. Let's put this here so it's easy to see. The boss punches and the hitbox is like this. Punch, punch hitbox. If it faces, this is when it, not like this because left is default, right? So it punches like this. It turns around, it's facing right. The graphics automatically turn around because we built a time map loader that way. We want the hitbox to match. So we want it to automatically turn out like this instead of this. And we don't want it here because the graphics are gonna be here. So we need so we need to take the 16 by 16 size into account when flipping the uh, hitbox, which we didn't really need to do for the graphics because we automatically flip those. Uh, the SNES hardware automatically flips those and it, auto and it already knows what sizes they are. So we don't need to take that into account there. So this is gonna be a bit more complicated. So what we have to do is, uh, let, let's look at this example again. Let's do, can we get paint? Paint, paint help me, help, help. So we have uh, this sprite here. This is sprite, S for sprite. And this is the hitbox. And this is the flipped hitbox. Let's make this red, I guess. Flipped hitbox. So how do we turn this X into this x because that's the only thing we're changing we're not changing the y position we're not changing the width or the height we're only changing the x coordinate 
And how do we do that? Um, I don't remember, but we're gonna figure it out. I think it's probably pretty simple. Let's uh, size this up a bit. No, that's not how you do that. Stupid paint. There we go. I'm sorry, paint. I, I love you. I would never hurt you. Precious, precious paint. Okay, okay. So we know that uh, if we just flip this, so let's see, this is, let's say this is two tiles wide. So this is minus 20. If we just flip it, it's gonna be plus 20. So we start here, plus 10, plus 20. So we end up here. This is if we just flip it. Uh, what if we just what if we flip it and then subtract the uh, size of If I recall correctly, we have to do, do something with the width of this thing as well um, Oh gosh, I'm too tired to do this. I know I know it's just the afternoon guys You can see that it's three o'clock for me, but uh, oh man, I'm still a little sick um, I am actually gonna look into the um, extra marble code here um, so you get it, uh, sure, you get a little sneak peek at that, I guess. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, hitbox, what do I call it? Uh, load hitbox, no. Uh, output hurtbox, no. Where is it? Maybe it is in here, actually. Uh, what did I call it? Can't remember. Uh, da, 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 da. Hurt generate. What? Collision? Is that right? No, definitely not. That's a uh, terrain collision. Could it be here? No. Or could it? Yeah, okay, so this is actually it. So this is what I did here. And these are loaded by pointers because they can be in different banks, right? Uh. So let's see, I do this, size, store here, uh, x, and then we flip it, we add 10 and we subtract that. Okay, so what we do is we subtract, <laughs> to flip it, we flip this, we invert this coordinate, so we end up here on this uh, circle here. Then we add this, the 10, uh, hex 10, so 16 pixels, and then we... Wait, is that what we did? Am I crazy? Yeah, we add that and then we subtract the width of the uh, uh, of the hitbox. Wonderful. Uh, I'm glad I figured that out so easily. <laughs> I'll try to get some good sleep, so I'm um, in better shape tomorrow. Let's see. So here on hitbox, we want to... Let's see, we're using Y here. So I guess we'll just take uh, this somewhere else. Where do we put this? Oh gosh. Oh wait, we, no, we can just read this. We can just read this. So let's see here. And this is X. So I guess we'll do... This is a little ugly. Hmm. Yeah, well, we have to do it here, I think. Is that true? Hmm. Otherwise, we want to put this first so we can flip this and then just work with this uh, unencumbered. If that makes sense. We'll put this here for now. We'll optimize this later. Uh, I'll worry about optimizing this later. Uh, and uh, if it's zero, uh, left. Here, uh, let's see. We'll call this load head box. Left, right. Right, this is an 8 bit, this is a 16 bit number. Oh, how annoying. So, I guess. Okay, now I'm kind of frustrated. No, I already used this, right? I already used that up, so now I can probably overwrite. These get these do get shredded in this routine, I think, so we're gonna have to reload these anyway for each hitbox. So I think I can actually, act, I can overwrite E and F after I used this, right? 
here. So we're gonna do this. Put that in E. Right, load this, subtract E, add 10. No, we have to do this first. If I recall correctly, we do not want ink here because then we just have to add F instead of 10. So we can just add 10 instead. Maybe I did sec ADC. Did I actually do that? No, CLC ADC, wonderful. And that's going to be that. Uh, right X. Let's see here. Yeah, as you see, this is way simpler on this side and then this side. This is probably gonna work. Um, let's close that. Go back here. Uh, I think we can close this probably. Let's keep it open for a little bit. And let's actually make this, let's change this into a tile. We can actually see which direction it's facing. Let's use, um, <laughs> let's use the Koopa, why not? Uh, so 82 and A2. 82, uh, A2, and like I said, we can choose how many tiles we load by just doing this. So now we're loading another tile and let's make sure the Y coordinate of that one is 10. So it's below. And uh, let's also add something so we can actually change its uh, facing direction. I guess uh, we'll add a debug area here and we'll do, uh, let's see that I read the controllers properly here. 17, I think it is. No, held down. 18 is pressed to this frame. And if we press uh, 80, 40, 20 is L. Let's just do this. Uh, then the sprite will face left. And then we repeat this for right. Like so. So now we can actually change its facing direction with L and R. And let's also make sure that this test hit box, I know we're doing a lot of changes now, but it's fine, it's fine, I promise. Uh, let's add 10 to it. No, oh, wait, <sighs> of course. <laughs> Left is default, so let's subtract 10 from it. Like so, and then let's add one more tile here. Let's add the... Uh, Let's add the happy face. This one, the happy coin, C2. Uh, C2, and then call this one, or add this one like so, on the left side. And then the hitbox will be attached to that if we did everything correctly. Make here. I get, oh right, and increment the header size to C. Also, let's, this palette look ugly as shit. Let's make it like so. No, damn it, Arvig Jason. Here. See, no hit, oh no, the hitbox is here. What am I doing? I think I flipped it, I reverse flipped it. He's facing left, I'm pushing L, so he should be facing left. Oh, I think I did the, uh, so the graphics routine are actually incorrect here. This one is appearing where it should. So this is, I push R, so it should be facing right here. Uh, that is correct, right? Zero is left. Am I correct? Uh, zero, no, zero is right. Zero is right. Okay, okay. So I fucked this up here. Uh, zero is right. Let's just flip these. And then when we read this, it's B and E left. Okay, now it should work just fine. Here, so facing right is zero. You can see the hitbox is here. It's still appearing here because it's appearing at the sprite instead of here. And then we flip it to the left side and this is no longer a hitbox. Only this hitbox. Okay, so we got the hitbox loader working. We got the time lap loader working. 
we still have a lot of work to do, obviously. Like, this is not a boss sprite yet. It doesn't have any movement. Uh, I guess that's what we'll start working on next time, probably. Which might mean that we start by working on phase two instead of... We might actually start working on phase three first, because that's gonna get a lot of the basics out of the way. Uh, but probably the first thing we do next time is talk about the design and what our goals are and how we plan on tackling those, um, as in how we plan on tackling the specific goals for this project rather than just the basics that we have been working on today. Uh, this code... Oh, right, I guess I didn't ask if I could actually make this publicly available. I did ask in the Discord if I could make this into like a tutorial series and I got the green light on that. So I'm assuming it's fine I show this. I don't know how else I could turn it into a tutorial series. But um, yeah, probably you can find, I'll put these files somewhere you can find them, probably. Uh, next time uh, we'll continue with, um, uh, what do we continue with? We continue with, uh, what did I say? Um, working on the, uh, oh shit, we have someone in, we have someone in the chat. Hello, Anon, I love you. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're, you don't like, uh, you don't like these basic animation routines and hitboxes. Yeah, uh, we're just doing the basics here. Uh, I think a lot of people that program sprites don't actually know how to do the basics, so uh, I figured that we should cover that first, even though um, this is not something you do a lot. Uh, for example, when I work in Extra Mario World, I have a bunch of routines that do all of these things. But as you saw here, when I wanted to expand the time lap, I just did this. I just added these lines and incremented this header, and it was super easy. It's gonna be the same thing when I want to add more hitboxes. I'm just gonna like add more of these, and it's super easy. Uh, and you'll see later, I have a plan for how we're going to pass pointers to uh, the time map loader and it's going to be really slick and it's going to be really easy to work with. And this is a little bit more expensive than just hard coding tile maps, sure, but it's so much easier to work with. I think it's worth it, especially if you use SA1. But like I said, we have to be a little bit careful because we don't have SA1 here. Uh, but anyway, yeah, next time we talk more about the specifics that we're gonna have to uh, the specific problems We're gonna have to solve for this project and um, Then we'll do uh, We'll do some more basic stuff. We'll get started in movement um, and Yeah, uh, sorry Anon you tuned into uh, the very end of the stream uh, I purpose I on purpose did not tell anyone I was gonna do this stream because I didn't really want people watching because this is the first time I'm streaming and I don't really know what I'm doing, but this was this was pretty fun. I uh, think it went well. So uh, next time I'm actually gonna tell people on Discord and maybe we'll have a little audience and we'll have a little bit of back and forth with the chat or something like that. No, I said it again. I said I wasn't gonna say something like that so much. <sighs> I am very tired and still a little bit sick, so I'm probably gonna go take it easy for the rest of the day now. But hopefully this project is gonna go smoothly. It's a lot of fun to work on this. Um, and uh, thank you everyone who watches this in the future, I guess. <laughs>